Hi guys, it's Alyssa from Planet Alyssa, and I am here with part two of three of my Amazon FBA basics, uh, whatever you want to call it, video. And in the first video, I showed you how to add items, how to list items, I guess I should say, and add them to a shipping plan. And then in this video, I'm going to cover uh, printing out the labels that go on the items, creating the shipments to go off to Amazon, and then packing up those shipments and actually sending them out. And then what I'm going to do in the third video is just kind of cover a whole bunch of other stuff that I haven't really covered, um, important tips and things to know and keep in mind and just whatever other stuff comes into my head because Amazon there's a lot of stuff to think about and to understand when you're doing this and there's a lot of ways that's very different than selling on sites like eBay or Etsy so it's important to know these things. Anyway, um, it's a few days later. It is Monday now. I think the last video I made on Thursday. My shipping plan started out with just two items on it. The two that I showed you, that book and that puzzle, I think it was. And now I have 119 items. So I am going to be sending this stuff off to Amazon. And so I want to take you through the steps to do that. The first thing that I'm going to be doing is printing out the labels that go on each of the items that I'm sending out. Now, if you have a dedicated label printer, like a little thermal printer to print individual labels, I guess you could print the labels as you're adding each item to your shipping plan. I don't have that. Um, what I have is a laser printer, and that is what I use to print out all my labels. I also use it to print out the labels that go on the boxes that I'm shipping out, both to Amazon and the stuff going, you know, that I'm shipping out for Etsy or eBay or whatever and um, basically everything I use this printer for. It is a black and white printer. It does not print in color. I rarely need a color printer, so um, this works for me. I'm filming this on my computer, so my printer's off to the side here and I can't really show it clearly, so I'm just gonna show an image of my printer. This is what it looks like. It is a Brother printer, uh, Brother laser printer. Uh, it's an HL2240. Uh, it doesn't really matter. It's really basic laser printer. I bought it at Staples. I think I paid $80 for it and uh, you know it was like on sale or whatever but uh, still like I, I think like the regular price on it's maybe like 120 bucks. You can always pick up these things on sale. Uh, you know check your local Staples or office supply store and uh, there's all different laser printers. They're all pretty good. They're all pretty sturdy. Before this, I had a Lexmark laser printer that I bought on eBay. That thing lasted for years. In fact, that printer, um, when I ordered it, you know, the person sent the description, there was a toner cartridge in it, but they had no idea if the cartridge was still good or how much ink was in there. So at the time I bought it, I also bought a replacement cartridge. I did not replace the cartridge on that printer for like two years. Like the one that was in it when I bought it uh, still worked for like two years. These cartridges last forever in the laser printers. My printer takes a cartridge that costs about like $40. Sometimes I can get it on sale, maybe like 30 bucks, which seems like a lot to me, but even the inkjet, uh, toner is, is if you get it you know the name brand stuff it's, it's about that too and you know inkjet things are like this big and the laser things are this big and have a lot more ink in them and, and print for thousands of pages I mean I I routinely uh, print over a thousand pages with a, a single cartridge um, so it is a good investment now Amazon does request that you use either a laser printer or a thermal label printer for printing your labels. I know a lot of people do use an inkjet printer. The problem with the inkjet, inkjet is that the ink can smear on the label, um, so that's an issue. To actually save money, you probably want to, if you you know don't do it right away, um, you want to reinvest your profits and pick up a laser printer because in the long run you'll save yourself a lot of money with one because you know the toner is a, is a big expense and like I said the toner lasts forever I mean maybe if I have a year where I'm printing like a lot of stuff like I'm also an author so I sometimes print out like you know a 400 page book or something on here so you know maybe if I'm doing that then may, I might go through two cartridges a year but that's the max usually I can you know get through a year with a single cartridge and I'm printing all kinds of stuff all the time every day a, a great money saver here is the laser printer Anyway, um, when you are printing labels for Amazon and using a laser printer or inkjet printer, you're going to need to get sheets of labels. Um, you can't really see these, but 
These are white labels. Amazon requests that you use removable labels. A lot of people don't because I know I've ordered stuff from Amazon and gotten stuff with labels that were clearly not removable because I couldn't easily remove them. One nice thing about removable labels, you do happen to make a mistake when you're labeling your products, which I have done. And uh, you know, if you have two items that are similar in name and you accidentally put the wrong one, um, you know, the wrong one, it's easy to, to pull it off and replace it. That's one nice thing about removable labels and they are what you're supposed to use, but uh, I know a lot of people don't. You will have to get labels that are white. Amazon sets a size for them. I, I don't know what the actual dimensions are, but anyway, they're the white mailing labels that come 30 to a sheet. So that's what you need to use. Uh, you can't adjust the size for the labels um, you know like you could like if you're printing something else out and you had you know labels that came like 40 to a sheet and you could adjust it so that they were the right size label you can't do that with the Amazon stuff so it has to be this size label that you use and I buy my labels from a place called online labels.com online mailing labels.com something like that um, I'll, I'll put a link in the description below uh, but you can get them anywhere uh, they seem to have really good rates uh, ship them pretty quickly so I'm very happy with them they're a lot cheaper than say buying uh, Avery labels from Staples or whatever um, and they're perfectly good labels I, I buy mailing labels from them too not so much the Amazon stuff because I'll, I'll use the free UPS labels for those but for post office stuff like Etsy stuff um, I buy my mailing labels from this online Online labels? Online mailing labels? Um, I can't think of the name of the company. But anyway, I'll put it below. So I'm going to go ahead and put my labels in the printer and then I'm going to show you how we actually get to where we need to print them out. Okay, so we're going to want to log into our Amazon seller account. Um, go to sellercentral.amazon.com and log into your account. And uh, this is just the, the home page when you log in. We're going to go once again to inventory over here and we're going to scroll down to manage FBA shipments and we're going to actually select continue with shipping plan because um, I created a shipping plan and added a whole bunch of stuff to it and I just have the one shipping plan going at a time and so we're going to continue with shipping plan and then we're going to scroll down to the bottom of the page. This is all the different items that are in my shipping plan. Uh, get back down here. There's a total of 119 items in the in the shipping plan, but 77 products. And we're going to just select continue here. This is going to take us to that page with the recommended uh, prep. This is kind of interesting because it only has two items under recommended prep. A Bunnies by the Bay is a, is a plush thing, so that is going to go in a bag. Um, Summer Infant Swaddle Me is is already in a bag. Actually, I guess the recommended prep is taping on it, um, so I can, I guess, tape the bag, although I think it's already sealed. But what's interesting is this is not totally accurate, I guess, because I think I have about a about 15 items or 10 or 15 items that I'm going to be bagging up. I haven't done it yet. I'm going to wait until I print out my labels because some of them are going to get labels on them before they get bagged up and some will get labeled after they're bagged up. But anyway, none of them are showing up here in the recommended prep. So uh, take this with a grain of salt. Anyway, we're going to select continue and we're going to go again, scroll all the way down to the bottom. These all have merchant as the person labeling the item because I am going to be the one labeling the item. And I'm going to select print labels for this page. Now you can see here it says 30 uh, up. I don't know what that even means. Labels. Um, here's the size on them. It's one inch by two and five eighths inch on US letter size paper. So those are the label sheets that I already put in my printer. And so I'm going to print labels for this page. And here's our, our sheet of labels. This is what the labels are going to look like. They're going to have the barcode number here that the barcode corresponds to and a title of the item. Now there's only so much space on these labels for a title. So if it's something that has a long title, it will truncate it. Here's um, one that this is a book called, it's called Fifty Shades of Kale. Um, it's actually a recipe book, not a, uh, not a spoof of Fifty Shades of Grey. But um, there's a subtitle to it that it has obviously been truncated here. You see the dot, dot, dot. So um, some of these, the way they get truncated, it might be hard to tell what the item is. Once you go to uh, 
go to put the label on. So you may have to look it up in your inventory just to make sure that you get the right item and, and don't pull Melissa and put the wrong label on the wrong item. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and print out this sheet. Okay guys, and here are my printed out labels. So as you can see, it looks just like um, that screen. Um, I have four sheets of labels because I have 119 of them. So I am going to uh, bag up the few items that I have that need to get bagged up. And like I said, some of them I'll put, depending on where the barcode is on the item, I may put the barcode on the item before I bag it up, and others I'll just put the barcode on the outside of the bag. One thing to keep in mind when you're labeling your products, you want to make sure that the only visible barcode on the product is your barcode, is this barcode label. Um, so you will encounter products that have more than one barcode on them or um, have like a really big barcode. You got to make sure the whole barcode is covered. So you may need to use um, a blank label or sometimes even what I do is because these sheets um, actually have like a, a border on them, which is made of the same sticky material as labels are. I will cut up the border there and use that to, to cover part of the uh, exposed barcode if it's not um, it's not totally covered by the label. Um, so it's just a little trick there. But yeah, make sure that this is the only barcode visible on your product. Because what's going to happen is your, your box is going to get to an Amazon warehouse with, you know, millions of other products that show up at the warehouse. There's some person there who may be a temp, who uh, certainly isn't paid very much money, is probably disgruntled, and you want to make their job as easy as possible so all they do is they just scan the barcodes on the incoming items and if there's two barcodes on your item they may not scan the right one and that may screw things up um, so cover up all labels or all barcodes except for yours and make sure it's prominently visible and, uh, and that there's no confusion no possible way to confuse things and one other thing I know that you can actually ask that Amazon uh, label your products. They will do so for a fee. You'll save a lot, mo lot more money labeling them yourselves. I think it's like 20 cents or something for each product for Amazon to label it, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it, it does add up. And there are also things where you don't necessarily have to label it. Um, you can send something in and it will become commingled as Amazon calls it, with other products, and I would strongly recommend that you don't do this. The problem with commingled inventory is you can verify the authenticity of your product. You know it's in the condition that you said it's in, but you don't know what anyone else is sending in. It may not be an authentic item. It may be, you know, a pirated thing, a bootleg thing. It may be not in the condition that they said it was in. It may not be new when they said it was new but your stuff is going to get commingled with that and then when someone orders it um, what they ship out in you know as you sell something may not be the product that you you should sent in um, so that's how commingled inventory works and you're opening your, yourself up to potential difficulties by doing commingled inventory that's just my opinion um, so I would stay away from that and um, just label the products yourself that you're sending in it's not too big a hassle. You'll get used to it. I know when you first start doing it, it does seem complicated, but trust me, um, it's really not too bad. And I, what I do is I put labels on my items as I'm putting them in the boxes. So next thing I will show you is how to actually create the shipments, which is the next step. Okay, so we're back here at the page where we, uh, the last thing we did was we selected print labels for this page. So we're gonna hit the continue button to go on to the next step here. So it is going to bring up the screen, which is going to show us the shipments for our order. And it has broken up this order into, let me see, one, two, three, four, five different warehouses, which um, is probably the most I've ever sent to. And I know that one of these shipments contains oversized products. This one here, I believe, of the three going to Charleston, Tennessee, is actually oversized products. Those they will usually have you send separately from the, the normal size products. And this order is interesting because it has 25 items going to a distribution center uh, in Hazleton. And I hate sending to distribution centers because it means they, it's going to take longer for the items to... Uh, to get to the warehouse and be checked in um, and be available. Um, but then I have 
uh, 26 units going to California, uh, 52 going to Virginia, and 13 going to Indiana. So the closest of these warehouses to me is the one in Virginia, and that is where the majority of the items are going. So I guess that's good. You can't really predict where Amazon is going to have you send stuff uh, for a while there. You know, it seems like every week I was sending to the, uh, the Princeton, New Jersey, or I think it's Robbinsville, whatever, um, the one in New Jersey, and uh, that was great because it would get there the next day, uh, it's very close to me, sorry my dog is barking like a lunatic right now, for a while there I was sending to Delaware all the time, and Delaware is great, I think I sent to Delaware last week actually because that's another one where it gets there the next day, like the California one, um, it's pretty much as far as a warehouse can possibly be for me, so it usually takes at least a week to get there um, by UPS ground, which is how these packages go out. Down here we're going to have to say that we approve the shipments. Okay, so this brings it, us to this screen here where we can work on the different shipments. Now what I usually do is I start with the smallest shipments first and then work my way up. There are two ways you can do this as far as seeing what's in each shipment. You can like select to view the shipment contents, just look at them on the screen, and I mean especially with something that's only three items, um, that's no problem. When you have a bigger order, even like, you know, say 25 items, it might be tough to keep track of them on the screen. When I was first doing this, I'd like to have a printed out copy so I could go through, you know, with my highlighter, mark each thing as I added it to the box to make sure I didn't miss anything and make sure I included everything. If you do that, you can select the download pack list. And um, if you do that, what you will end up with is a tab delineated text file. Kind of hard to see because it'll just open in a text editor. But if you copy the whole thing, um, open up a new spreadsheet, like an Excel spreadsheet or, you know, the Google Docs or Open Office equivalent, put your cursor into one of the cells and then just hit paste, it'll actually populate the fields and I'll break it down to columns and rows so it's a little bit easier to see what's going on and then you can print that out and uh, and use that as your packing list as you're packing up your boxes. Then maybe I'll show you how to pack up a, uh, a simple order like this one here going to Indiana. Okay guys I'm in the middle of packing up this uh, this one shipment that's going to Indiana. I think there are 13 um, items all together, 10 different products. And so you can see I got, I mean, this is something where I bagged it up. So I just put the barcode on the outside of the bag. Um, there's item, other items where, of course, I put the barcode over the barcode that's on the package. And um, I just have a few more things to add to this. But because the fabric's exposed, I bagged this up. But this is something where I put the barcode on the package because it seems like the best spot for it. So the pack. The barcode is underneath the bag. Now this is everything that's going to go in this box and as you can see there's going to be some empty space in the box. So I'm going to want to fill up all the empty space with pack. Sorry my phone cut out there as I was filming so I'm not sure what just happened. But anyway, when you are packing up your boxes, just like when you're packing up boxes for eBay or Etsy or whatever, you want to make sure you don't have any like dead space in the box. You want to have the box as filled as possible. Obviously, you know, you might not have it all filled with items because you might not have enough items to fill up the box. Use some kind of packing material or whatever to fill the dead space there so that the box, um, you know, it doesn't get crushed because it's going to get stuff stacked on top of it. It's going to get tossed around and if there's dead space there then the box will get crushed. I use newspaper. I know some people don't like to use newspaper because they're worried about, you know, the ink rubbing off. Um, if you are, you can use, you can purchase, um, you know, packing material, packing paper. Okay, once you have your box all packed up and taped up, uh, the next step is to actually print out the shipping labels for it. The box that I just packed up was this one that's going to Indiana. So I'm going to click work on shipment here. I'm going to scroll down here to enter the shipment information. This is going by small parcel delivery. It's going to go by UPS. Here's where you'd select the shipping carrier, but we're going to use Amazon's UPS account because we get deeply discounted ground shipping. Uh, Amazon gets awesome deals from UPS because they ship so much stuff and and we can take advantage of that when we are sending our stuff to Amazon. So this is the best way to ship things. I have just one box going to this warehouse. If it was a bigger shipment, I would probably have um, a couple or three boxes. And so here's where I'd, I'd let them know how many boxes are coming. I'd scroll down here. I actually started filling this in before and then I forgot I have to show you it. So the box that I'm shipping in weighs 12 pounds. I measured it. It is 20 by 15 by 13 and 
we go down here, we'll hit calculate. I just sold something on Etsy. Um, if I hit calculate, it will tell us that it's going to cost $5.53 to ship this 12 pound box to Indiana. So that is why I am using Amazon's UPS account because we get an awesome deal. So we just click I agree to the terms and conditions and hit accept charges. And then we can go here and print our box labels. This is just like when you print shipping labels for eBay or Etsy. I happen to use the white mailing labels. You can get these for free from UPS if you're doing UPS packages. Just I guess you need a UPS account and if you go on there under their uh, under their different free supplies, they have the white two to a page labels. So that's what I use. There are two labels that are going to go on this box. This one here is the UPS label, the prepaid label, and the other label here that we see is actually for the Amazon warehouse so that they can scan this in when it gets there um, and that tells them what's going to be in the package and um, it'll also show up in your account then that the package has been checked in at the warehouse. I will be dropping my boxes off at UPS. You can also depending on where you are and what your situation is. You can also have UPS pick up the packages at your house or business or wherever you have UPS pick up. For me, it's actually easier to drop them off at UPS. So that is what I do. So that guys is pretty much it. I think that covers all the basics, you know, packing up a shipment to go off to Amazon. And then I'm going to make a third video and that'll just cover all the other stuff that I haven't covered in these previous two videos as far as stuff you need to know about selling FBA, um, different things to keep in mind and um, just whatever I can think of. And who knows, I might have to make a fourth video at some point with all the things that I forgot to tell you. But um, anyway, I hope that helps and good luck to you all.